the 29th of November 2012, there will be a hearing of the decision made by the Criminal Cases Review Commission to not refer the case of Jeremy Bamber back to the Court of Appeal. Back in 2004, after Jeremy Bamber had endured almost 20 years of wrongful imprisonment, the CCRC finally decided to reopen Bamber's case on the back of an overwhelming amount of evidence in support of his innocence. The tone was set, however, with the fact that the CCRC took an astonishing further eight years to actually get into action as Bamber was left once again to battle the system in support of justice. Jeremy Bamber submitted substantial amounts of evidence, previously unseen, in support of his case and, in 2010, was offered free forensic work on the case to help boost his bid. As the work would take a period of six months to complete, Bamber asked for an extension on the deadline set by the CCRC for the submission of documents to facilitate the results of the forensic work. Bizarrely, the CCRC refused Bamber this extension and further ruled that no further submissions would be welcomed, despite the fact that Bamber and his team still held substantial documentation whilst working on further emerging leads. In early 2011, speaking of his frustrations at the lack of progress, Bamber spoke to a journalist and confident in a conversation that was recorded and subsequently publicly broadcast. When asked what would happen if the CCRC refused to refer his case back to the Court of Appeal, Bamba understandably replied, Well, we'd start exposing some of the other stuff I know about. In February 2011, the CCRC ruled that there was no evidence to support the referral of Jeremy Bamba's case back to the Court of Appeal. In an even more bizarre twist, their ruling contained a criticism of Bamber for the comment regarding outstanding information in his possession, saying that Bamber had not shown them his full hand. We asked the simple question, how on earth could Jeremy Bamber have shown the CCRC all of the documents and evidence he referred to whilst making the comment, when the CCRC themselves ruled that they would accept no further submissions? From Jeremy's own hand all the way through to the Houses of Parliament and MPs, countless appeals have been made to the CCRC to exercise their powers and obtain from Essex Police key forensic documents relating to Jeremy Bamber that still, to this day, remain undisclosed. Still more brick walls and still more non-disclosure. The CCRC continues to refuse to use its own legal powers under Section 17 of the Criminal Appeal Act 1995 to obtain key documents. It also continues to invent new excuses for this, even saying they can't see the value of obtaining the key documents that would secure an innocent man the freedom he deserves. Michael Norton, director of the Innocence Project, says that UK law does not allow for innocence by virtue of miscarriage of justice, but only a miscarriage of due process. We argue that the CCRC clearly is not fit for purpose and continues to betray the intentions with which it was founded. In many respects, the 29th of November 2012 is something of a judgement day for the CCRC as the High Court holds a hearing into their decision to reject key forensic evidence in contrary to the Criminal Appeal Act 1968 and 1995. If justice prevails, then the CCRC should have its integrity, veracity and professionalism brought into question with a victory for Jeremy Bamber and, more importantly, Jeremy himself will be able to count down the days until he can taste freedom. <laughs>